Hey, today we've got the legendary Tiffany Bova talking about client experience and differentiating yourself from the competition. Hey, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. I'm super excited to have the legendary at Tiffany Bova. Make sure you follow her on Twitter. Um, evangelist of growth and innovation at that little company called Salesforce. Yep, small little company, small little tower in San Francisco. So yep. all these extraordinary people are watching this are in, in real estate, they're in mortgage, they're in insurance, they're in title sales, but they are like you and I, they are cut from that interesting cloth called sales. Yes. So take just a second and share with you know all the people that are watching this, who is Tiffany Bova? Why should we care? Like, I know you're a baller when it comes to sales and certainly in marketing, but give me a little insight on who's Tiffany Bova. So if I were just to describe myself, I call myself a recovering seller. Ooh, I love that. Because I no longer carry a quota, but I wake up every day, yes. you know, fighting the fight to try to help salespeople out there around the globe yes. be better and be more productive and, and hit their numbers. So that's what I spend my days yes. doing. So I vicariously get to sell through everybody I get in front of, which is, I, I feel like I carry a global quota. So you, so I get to do for the real estate industry, you're doing for Salesforce and then all of their gazillion Yeah, it doesn't partners. matter what industry. It yes. doesn't matter what industry. Yeah. All right, so I think me, sales is sales, but. But let me give you, so check this out, you ready? So uh, most powerful women and influential women in California by the National Diversity Council, yeah. top 50 marketing thought leaders by Brand Quarterly Magazine, uh, Let's see real faster. There's one of them that just moved me. One of Inc. Magazine's 37 sales experts you need to follow on Twitter. Yeah. We're talking like you, Seth Godin, heroes of mine. I mean, you know, you are a legend. And check this out. She's got a new book. I got the advanced copy. It's insanely great. Inc. Magazine already uh, quoted it yesterday as the four best books to read before the end of summer. Yes. Um, there are all these incredible growth IQ strategies. You know I'm all about growth mindset, growing, helping you grow your business. Tiffany's gonna help us do it today. The first chapter though, you go right into something that is critical for the real estate world right now. They are suffering from this, this lack of identity. There's, there's eight million real estate agents, everybody's got nine friends in the business, <laughs> and, and how do we differentiate ourselves? And, and you go right into this first growth path as like the customer experience, which I think is one of the great differentiators. So could you maybe just speak to the audience on like what is sort of the overarching message and then let's get into some granular stuff on what they can do. So, so what is this first growth path, this customer experience? Yeah, I think it's interesting, right? Because you have a product that you sell and many people don't view themselves as a product, Yes. right? But I believe that the greatest uh, advocate and the greatest sales force out there is your customers. Yes. Your past customers yep. yes. advocating yes. on your behalf, yes. right? And so if you're differentiated and you give them this amazing experience, what do they do? They go tell 10 of their friends. Yes. And you know, there's lots of research out there that says people uh, you know, are 60%, 65% through their buying journey before they ever pick up the phone and call someone like a realtor. 100%. So mm -hmm. having that advocacy out in the marketplace with yes. someone else telling your story, mm -hmm. you can't pay for that kind of marketing. No mailer is gonna beat word of mouth. We have, we have talked, so they have heard me for at least the last 10 years saying, it used to be written letters of testimonial, right? right? right. Then we put those on our website. Now today between Zillow and Google and other places, the, we call it, it's like the review-based economy, that we're reading reviews to decide, do I like this agent or not? So, so do you have any insights on reviews, any, any more stats that they need to know about? Because I've been pounding them on it. Yeah, I would say this, you know, I think it's the subtle side of having people advocate on your behalf. Mm. You know, if it's too much in your face, then yes. it doesn't feel authentic. Yes. It has to be that kind of natural conversation that someone's having with a friend or a colleague and they're yes. talking about, hey, I'm thinking about moving. And then they say, I've been dealing with this amazing realtor. It's yes. like, oh, who are you working with? Mm -hmm. That kind of just natural conversation. Yes. True is word very, of mouth. True word of mouth, right, is very different than blasting out what someone says about you. Are, right? you, saying, so are you saying we shouldn't be blasting it? No, I think there's the subtle side of it, which yes. has a lot of impact. Yes. Then there's the very prescriptive side of it, which is also necessary. As people go through that journey and they yes. find you, they want to see what other people say about you, Absolutely. right? So you need to have both, but I still think the greatest sales force for anybody who's out selling something is their past customers advocating on their behalf, full stop. Agree 100%, yep. 100%. So, so let's talk about the customer experience, right? So the, I wrote down this question, like customers, you know, inside the book, you talked about they remember the experience they had with a brand longer than they ever think about the fee or the price. Yes. Right, so, so a lot of our clients watching this, they're in marketplaces where 
the fee is now an issue. Yes. Right? So, so how do we help them? Like, what are two or three things they can do up front to create a better quality experience so the fee becomes a no-brainer. Yeah, so I, I love to use this example. So if, I, if we were in front of people, I'd be like, okay, how many of you in the audience rode an Uber 30 days ago? You know, pretty much everyone's hands are gonna go up, yep. right? And then I say, okay, leave your hands up. How many of you remember how much you spent on that Uber ride? Do you remember oh. your last one? Uh, no. No, yeah. no, I'm thinking of, no. Right, so Clayton Christensen says in his book, Competing Against Luck, Everything's a job from point A to B, mm -hmm. right? So I need a ride, a taxi ride, or I need to get from one place to the next place. That's yes. the job I need done. Yes. So why do I pick an Uber over a taxi? Yes. Right? Because the job still gets done. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's three things. One, I travel around the world. I don't have to carry currency. Mm -hmm. Or I don't have to have money on me if I'm yes. in the U.S. Yep. Okay? And I don't have to worry about a credit card machine not working. Yep. The, the second one is that it directly connects into my expense report now. Yes. So it removes this other step I'd have to take. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when I catch a cab, it's like, I think it was $6 and it was really 16 because yeah. I don't remember how much I spent. Do you I need spent. a receipt? Yeah, do you need a receipt? Remember hearing and that? Fill, do you need a receipt? And then fill it in yourself. You're yeah. like, I, I, somehow I'm always on the wrong side of that equation, yes. right? And the third reason is because I travel alone a lot, uh, someone will know where I was last. Yes. Okay. So those are the three reasons. Not oh. so good for people like Jameson, Winston, whatever the <laughs> football player right now. But sorry, personal note. <laughs> but but if no. you but if you if you think about those two things, the reason I chose one brand yeah. over another was totally experience based. Yes. And I have stood on a street corner uh, in the snow when it's mm -hmm. freezing mm -hmm. with my phone in my hand, watching taxis drive by, mm -hmm. waiting for my Uber. Yes. During surge pricing which means I'm actually willing to spend more. Yes. So customers have told us in a lot of research we've done and a lot of research that's out there that they'll actually spend, spend a premium of up to almost 15% yes. for a better experience on a brand. Yes. Think hotel, think home you're gonna buy. Yes. One condo over another condo and yes. one condo has a pool and a gym and a concierge and yep. all of those things. That's all experience based because yes. your apartment, right, is still a place you live and sleep. The job is being done. Yes. The rest that the building has or the other amenities a home mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. is the experience someone puts in it. And, you know, many people will say, careful how much money you put in a house, you might not get it out from an mm -hmm. investment standpoint, mm -hmm. right? Because the other person might not appreciate that experience yes. the way you appreciate yes. that experience, right? Yes. But that's all experience based. So I think that when you start to realize that you and what you deliver is also part of that experience, yes. it really changes the game, really yes. changes the game. So, so think about it like this. So much of what, um, what our clients are dealing with today is this on-demand environment, yeah. right? So, so last year, Amazon put out a page one day and said, like, you know, thinking about real estate, looking for some real estate needs, and people freaked because the fear of not having my phone, of just being able to go buy it ship it here in 30 minutes. And many companies have moved towards, obviously, that on-demand experience, whether it's buying direct or buying online. And what agents are doing now is they're finding themselves, how do I create the illusion that my experience is on-demand? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I think there's a couple things. I think that we cannot be afraid of the fact that technology is changing the way yes. we market and sell and buy and mm -hmm. act as consumers. Yes. You know, every day in our personal lives, we're consumers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would say, you know, once again, how many of you have bought on Amazon the last 30 days? Everyone raises their hand, yeah. right? Yes. And then I'll say, well, how many of you went through the training mm -hmm. of how to buy on Amazon? Yes. And it's a trick question, yeah. right? There was no training because it's, it's super easy, easy it's right? Too, yeah. And so then you say, well, how am I going to compete against whomever is coming in the market? Yes. Like that Amazon example you gave. Mm -hmm. I'll just give an example from Australia that I learned some six years ago in the real estate industry where uh, someone came up with a IoT device on the real estate sign. So as you pulled up, if you had the app, it would recognize that you were sitting in front of the house yes. and would push you content, right? Yep. And say, here, take a tour of the home. Yes. This was six years ago, yes. right? And then people are going, well, no, well, wait a minute. And then I don't need Brokers Opens and I'm not gonna physically show them the house. And I go, yes, but me as a consumer, maybe I don't want that experience. Mm -hmm. I like sitting in front of a house and getting a feel for the neighborhood and actually having it all yes. push. I can turn it down or not turn it down. Yep. So we have to find a way to embrace what's coming at us no matter what. Yes. The harder you dig in your heels, the worse it's going to be from you. But you don't need to say yes to everything. You know, you have to see what works for you yes. and, and your teams. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying everyone has to go put IoT on a, on a sign. I remember a very Internet dear friend of, of ours. Yeah, Internet, Internet of things, things, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. A very dear friend of ours was the very first to put pictures yes. on their real estate signs. Yes. And yes. buy advertising at the end, beginning of movies. Yep. And that was 
15 years ago, if yeah. not a little longer. Yeah, and yeah. then everybody does it now, yeah. right? You, you just have to find something that's going to really differentiate you yes. in, in the marketplace. So, so one of my mentors, Mike Vance, would talk about the experience economy in the context of, like, run everything through the five senses, right? From the first time they meet with you, right? And you think of, like, sight, taste, scent, you know, all, all these different senses. Is there anything, then again, you know, going back to the book, do you have any insight on, again, the experience, the time that I meet that agent? What advice would you give to have them really stand out? Yeah, so this is, this is one that I find fascinating. I've been actually doing some work in real estate over the last couple of years now mm -hmm. since I've joined Salesforce. And, um, you know, I would say understanding who your existing customers are. Yes. Who are they? Are they mostly families? Are they mostly yes. single? Are yeah. they mostly, what are they? Yeah. Men, yeah. women, avatar, couples, right? right, right what, perfect customer. Who's your perfect customer? Mm -hmm. and, and why did they choose you? Yes. And find out what that is. Yeah. What they think. Yes. Then their how do, perception. Their perception. Then how do you take that and weave it into your marketing? Yes. Do you want to just sell anything to anyone? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to be really good and known for something? Yes. You know, condos in a particular area or homes, single yes. family homes or duplexes yep. or whatever Com it might be. Communities. Communities, right, whatever, like you know. Dominate Corona Del Mar, whatever what, it is. Whatever it is. Set. Yes. You, you know, owning a owning something, creating that beachfront yes. and creating that reputation, yes. right? That's that flywheel effect yeah. and that multiplier yeah. effect, right? Yeah. And so I'd say a lot of realtors may not even know the answers to those questions, yes. right? And so they're not capturing it in something. You know, yeah. yes, where I work, uh, we, we obviously can do that, right? A lot of data. It, you know, a lot of data on the CRM side uh, from a Salesforce perspective, but I just want it captured somewhere. You have to capture it somewhere so that you can get more intelligent with who you're working with and what's going on because, yep. you know, then you're smarter about the decisions that you make. And it could even be just a, like, you think about, like, the power of CSAT today, like customer, su customer satisfaction surveys. Yes. Like, hey, we just engaged with each other. You were on my website. What did you think? What did you like? What did you not like? But if you're not today doing a post-transaction survey, using SurveyMonkey, something super simple. What are three things you liked about the experience? What are three things that maybe you, know, you wish we did different or better to get that feedback? Because at the end of the day, it's like sell people what they want in their model of the world and you're going to win. Right? Yeah, Is that it, kind of part of it? Yeah, and I'd say two sides to that coin. I'd say one, for sure, ask customers who bought from you yes. why they bought from you. But yes. I would also uh, go out and reach out to people who didn't buy from you. Yes. Um, because then what was it that didn't resonate with them? Yes. And is it something you're willing to fix and pivot towards? Yes. Or are you going, that's okay, I'm glad they didn't buy from me and Thank move you. on, right? The one thing I'd say around doing the survey is that we find different kinds of results and insights when you do it on your own versus hiring a third party to do it on yes. your behalf. Yes. So if you've got the you know funds and the interest in really digging into what mm -hmm. makes you differentiated because uh, you know, I'd tell you that once you know what everyone else thinks of you, that's where you have to win. Yeah. Um, and just ignore the rest of it yes. till you get that stuff really right, yes. right? And so you also have the what didn't they like about you, yes. right? And so maybe that's something you need to lean away from, um, exactly. what, whatever it was. But uh, people tend to say survey monkey as an example, yeah. going out and surveying, right? You surveying, people may not give you the truth, True. right? And so having a third party do it, um, and maybe not even uh, online, but actually doing it over the phone, yep. you'll get those those insights. And that could be your title company, your escrow company, your yeah, lender, any, who's yeah, you know everybody. your brokerage on your behalf. Like as long as it's not just directly coming from you. Like, yeah, what, you, what did you like about me? And yeah. please, but please don't tell me what you didn't like. The whole experience. But but in the yeah. real estate industry, just like in technology, yeah. the challenges is that we have a very long supply chain. Yes. Right. You have a lot of touches through the sales cycle in real estate. Yes. Right. A mortgage, the title mm -hmm. company, the realtor, yeah. the inspector. Yep. the you know contractors I mean there's a lot of people touching a deal and then the realtors in the middle of it and so mm -hmm. if one or two of those people go awry on you or give a terrible experience it's reflective on you yes. and so you have to figure out how do you tighten that uh, mm -hmm. experience around that supply chain you know do you always work with the same mortgage broker do you always work with the yes. same title company who do you recommend does everybody have everybody on the same page and that has a lot to do with communication and collaboration once yes. again going back to very difficult to scale if you're doing 25 50 75 100 deals a year to scale on an Excel spreadsheet and post-it notes yeah. it's just impossible yeah. um, so you need to start to take advantage of some of the tools online whether it's collaboration or CRM or whatever yes. to manage that team in a way uh, uh, that gives the customer remember the best experience they can have okay that's the whole thing so now I'm gonna I want to switch gears just for a yep. second inside the book you talk about um, the guy that started Shake Shack and Danny Meyer Right, and I'm going to brain dead on him, Ray Kroc, right? At McDonald's. Uh, we didn't actually create McDonald's, but he turned it into what yes. we know it as. 
So both these guys talk about the product being secondary. Yes. Right? And and yet, like the assumption is, like in real estate, is the house the product? Is the agent the product? Like, and which one is secondary? Give me give me the sort of well, that tie in for real estate. Well, that goes back to what I just said, right? Yeah. Danny Meyer's like, look, I have a I'm selling you a burger. Yeah. Right across the street is another burger. Yep. From that other company, right? Yes. Or somebody else. Why would someone come in and buy my burger? Yeah. And why would they spend two dollars premium or three dollar premium for my burger? Yes. Right? So now in this case I use a Starbucks example, yeah. right? So if we were at an event, right, if we were standing at your event, you were giving free coffee outside, which everybody does at events, sure. and there was a Starbucks downstairs, I guarantee you there would be a line downstairs. Yes. So someone is willing to spend seven bucks yep. versus free. Yes. Free, yes. seven dollars. Yes. yes. Right? And what is it? Well, because I get to add, you know, order my half cap soy, da, this temperature, da, da, mm -hmm. the same way, or on my app, and I go back to the Uber example. Yep. I can order online. On demand, I don't super have to use I don't have to carry the yep. right. I can do all those things. And 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 Tesla has proven that people will spend a lot of money online sight unseen. In <laughs> and, seven minutes and buy your car. Yeah, in seven minutes and buy yes. your car. And then on many, you know, on on the uh, New York real estate guys, you know, they they absolutely push online, right? Yes. All the things they're doing and they yeah. tout how much they're doing, you know, yes. via Instagram and Facebook, yeah, et cetera, um, with sight unseen for international buyers. So, yes. I mean, I would go back to, it goes back to the experience. Yeah. So, you know, them saying, and even big companies like Ford is now saying that mm -hmm. they're much more interested in, in pivoting towards the experience inside the car yes. because they know that the quality of their car yes. is fine. Yeah. So now they're pivoting to the inside. Is yeah. there a charger for your iPhone? Is there a place yep. to put your iPad? Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Does it, this how does and it that, feel? Right? What does it smell like? Right? Yes. So, so all like it's it's experience. Ex is, what's fascinating is last year Greg Schwartz, uh, Chief Revenue Officer of Zillow, or now Chief Business Officer of Zillow, said we are shifting everything towards a better quality experience. Yep. Right. Unfortunately, in the real estate space when you look at the sort of consumer reports and, and the feedback that the vast majority of agents get, they put them really low on the list in terms of customer satisfaction. And yet, many of the people that are watching this Use them. have 700 <laughs> reviews on Zillow. You yeah. with me? Like, right. like, this is the cream of the cream. Right. Um, if there was one other thing that they could do to differentiate themselves, What's one, like, is it doing more video? Is it becoming, is it getting out in front of them and sharing more? Like, what other advice would you give to just create that separation? Yeah, so I'd say one thing, uh, and it comes down to this. Be where your customers are gonna be and yeah. greet them when they get there. Sort of yeah. where the puck is going, Yeah. right? Um, now, I don't need you to be Steve Jobs or Mark Benioff or no. Jeff Bezos. Like, I don't need you to be out years in advance. I yes. need you to be out like a half a year, a year out ahead yes. of. Right? Yes. So thinking about what do you think someone's going to want next? I mean, mm -hmm. I remember when it was like, we're going to do, you know, what about virtual reality of seeing homes? Yes. Like, yes. okay, so three years ago, that was no one was doing it. Yes. Right? So, and if you believed in it and go, well, I'm just going to try it because maybe there's a specific kind of buyer mm -hmm. that this is what they want to do yeah. and I'll test it. Yeah. Right? I'm not saying pour all your eggs into that yeah. basket, but you need to get ahead of where you think your customers are going to go. That goes back to, then you need to know who your customers are. Are they tech savvy? If they're not tech savvy, then that's not where you want to be investing. It needs yeah. to be a face-to-face -face relationship. Yes. Yes. If, they're, if they're younger and they're millennial and this is their first home, mm -hmm. they may be more inclined to do yep. virtual reality and do things online and have a lot of that journey happen yes. before they ever meet you, right? Yep. If it's kind of you're in between, then what's the balance you of the blend two? Both. But I go back to, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, Zillow is a great example. I remember that initially it was like, whoa, this is very, almost like the reaction of Amazon. Yes. Like this is going to yes. totally disrupt us, Yes. right? And it hasn't. No. It's made realtors better. It's made the customer more empowered. Yep. It's using technology now, real time, on demand, in your hand. You can find out information about Bingo. anything. Bingo. And so they're smarter, which means you have to make sure you stay ahead of them. Because if yep. you show up to someone and go, let me tell you all about this house. Mm -hmm. It's three bedroom, it's two baths, 1,500 square feet, it's all these things. And the customer's looking at you like, I know all this. Like, I got all that. I got all that. Tell yeah. me something I don't know. Yes. Right? And so you have to up your game. Yep. You have got to be able to provide information that your customers cannot get on their own. Bingo. Making the assumption that they're already two-thirds through their journey before they ever pick up the phone to call you, even if they're a really good friend. Right? So this is so great because you just validated probably 10 Tom Ferry episodes. But now done. they'll believe it because they heard it from me. <laughs> well, come on. Look at, <laughs> look at her all-star list of, you know. So, so kind of kind of just, you know, tightening this up, I want to just say really fast, everything she's saying here, you've heard speed to lead is a massive degree of separation. The on-demand economy, right? Be meeting your customer where they are, which really today is on their iPhone and quick, 
right? Some of these key distinctions we've talked about for now 18 months, many of you are adopting. I would challenge you, I would really challenge you to get honest with yourself and say, are we in the on-demand culture? The answer is yes, right? Are we in the review-based society? 1,000%. And if you haven't moved the needle towards these things, my friend, you're just, you're just missing a segment of the market that they're going to find somebody else whether you do these things or not. Right, so I just want to just kind of talking to my viewers, like reminding you, the head coach. Yeah, and I, and I, and I give you an example. So let me just pick millennials as an yes. example. So millennials now are, are saying that they want to buy from brands yes. or people yes. that actually uh, agree with their values. Yes. Right? So are you socially conscious? Are you giving back? Are you yes. doing something in the community? Mm -hmm. So if you're going after millennials, I'd say like, like what is your give back strategy? Yes. Like, and maybe that's your differentiator. Bingo. And the fact you sell homes is sort of, yeah, I sell houses. But what mm -hmm. I'm doing is I'm trying to clean up this community. Yes. Right? And I'm doing everything I can. And a percentage of my proceeds goes back towards cleaning Bingo. up the community. Bingo. And so now you're really speaking to millennials. Yes. So now what's the product? Yeah. Right? Who the cares? house, the, who cares, right? right? They're gonna say, look, I agree, I like you yep. better than this guy or girl because yep. this one is all about like, I'll get you the best deal, we're gonna find you the best house, and you're like, yeah, it's not totally about that. Like, mm -hmm. I wanna work with someone who yes. agrees with my values and my convictions, right? And That's so as, as a great example, right? Mm -hmm. Once again, you have to know who your customers are, who yep. you're gonna go after, yep. what's your value proposition, and then you need to be where they are, uh, and then you need to have a message that resonates. And then integrate that, integrate that beautifully into your marketing message, into your branding, into the stories that you're putting out in the marketplace. Because at the end of the day, that's the stuff that people remember. Yeah, it's noisy. It's yes. noisy. I yes. mean, you know, there's no shortage of realtors. No, 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 no. That's, not, that's not a problem. We only dug into one. I don't know if we can get a close up on this. Um, I am loving this. I highly recommend it. Uh, you need to go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Yeah, 800 CEO Reads, Indie, it, yeah, yes. Walmart, Target, it's everywhere. And, yeah. and this right here, Inc. Magazine, four best books to read before the end of summer. You're gonna see her live at the summit, whether you're with us live or uh, you know, certainly on livecast as well. Tiffany, I really appreciate this. Oh, it's such yeah. a pleasure, Tom. Yeah, thanks so for, for, thanks for having me in front of these great realtors, you know, yes. help them fight the fight. Get this book. All right, guys, remember always your strategy matters, and now more than ever, your passion rules. Go get them. Hey, I'm Tom Ferry, and I want to say welcome to real estate. Now, there's a pretty good chance no one's told you there's an 87% failure rate every five years in this business, and there's only two factors. Agents don't have the tools, and they don't take the right action. I'm going to invite you to click the link below and get access to the tools so you can win in this business.